Vincenzo Lancia was born at the family house in the foothills of the Italian Alps uh, in a little village called Fabello. Uh, there are stories in America of the crowds chanting, Lancia, Lancia, Lancia. Lancia took what was the standard design of a car and moved it forward 20, 30 years. Vincenzo Lancia is one of the great motoring pioneers in, in this world. But if you ask people, they don't know him. It can be said that he was the first Formula One driver of the Italian uh, nation. He was uh, probably fast and furious uh, like they called the movies today. He drove the cars always uh, to the limit. I think he must have learned a lot how far you could go and how far you should develop a car. He raced for Fiat. He was their top racing driver for a few years and then he decided he'd, you know, he could make better cars than Fiat could and set up on his own in 1906. Torino era una città che stava ridefinendosi. Negli ultimi anni dell'Ottocento si è reinventata come capitale dell'industria e danno vita ad una frenetica attività produttiva, concentrata per la maggior parte nel settore metalmeccanico. The founder that is or has been a race driver is a great opportunity for the company that starts. He had a vision. Um, and he also had some organizing talents with the, pe the right people surrounding him. And that's how it, it happened in the beginning. Lancio was the you know, conductor of the orchestra. By the 20s, things were really moving. Uh, the cars were faster, more reliable, they stopped. Uh, Lancio did it better than most, I would say, better than any. The progression at a certain point made Vincenzo Lancia think of something completely new, maybe a completely different approach, a turnaround of perspective. He designed a shell of a, of a boat, turned it upside down and created this monocoque body for, for the lambda. Set into, into the context of the history, yeah, of course, the Lambda was special, combining all those different ideas, put them all together into one concept. And to see those possibilities, you must have been a genius. The Lambda at that time, where it came to, the, to London and Paris, it was the most innovative car in the world. There isn't one single item. We couldn't say, oh, it's because it's got independent front suspension, oh, because it's got a V4 engine, but the whole cocktail of things put together was the work of an artist. Things we see now in everyday car, uh, it started in this car. The Aprilia is arguably the first modern light car. It was uh, designed in a wind tunnel, it was properly aerodynamic. It handled uh, and drove like a sports car, but yet it was a four-door saloon. People say it looked like a Volkswagen from the 50s, it's the other way around, but a Volkswagen just looked like an Aprilia from the 30s. To define the Aprilia, I think that the best solution is to, is to use the words of Vincenzo Lancia, that he, he said immediately after his first trip in 1936. It's a wonderful car. Vincenzo was a thinker. He was always looking to the future, how to improve things. Lightness, robustness, conservative, radical. Rolls-Royce uh, had a slightly different philosophy. They very much took the best and made it better, but they were not as uh, innovative or as forward-thinking as, as, as Lancia. There was never somebody saying, I want to make a car like Vincenzo Lancia. But they all liked it. So you cannot create your own Lancia. We don't know the inner character of the man, and I'm not convinced there's a way to get to know it. Uh, he didn't keep a journal that we know of. Uh, the only one who knew him is long gone. Vincenzo was a very cultural person. He very much liked classical music, especially Wagner. He was actually part of the board of the Torino Opera House and he was very much a recognized figure in Torino society. 
he was uh, a lively man uh, on the family side, but he was also uh, a sparkling person with many ideas of his own uh, technical solution, but also uh, a bubbly character, I think.